divorced and uh, broke. Good man. 216 or 1-800-348-1. For the Rockin' Buzzard Brew that is going to be rolled out on shelves all throughout Northeast Ohio. We're going to be there 5 to 8. I'm going to haul ass down there after the show. But 5 to 8, uh, MMS is going to be at the Brew Kettle down there in Strongsville for the inaugural tap. And so it should be very exciting. Looking forward to it. Bill and I are going to be doing some stuff tomorrow morning. Yeah, we're going to go, go down there. Video and, yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. We're going to be doing this the Schlemiel and the Schlema. Yeah. Schlema. Schlemazel. So uh, all the details on Rockin' Buzzard Brew. We haven't done a beer in a while. Uh, it's going to be available for you uh, very, very soon. So be uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. And we'll have um, a whole lot of um, information for you on it. That's our beer news for... Um, beer news! Melissa went to Sonic Temple. The Sober Town was great. The $15 pizza slices Dude, sucked. It was ridiculous. Yeah, but those are festival prices. $22 like, for a wrap. That is not that's a insane. Fa- I'm, exp- I'm expecting like 15 bucks, right? Well, okay. $22. It was the extra sour cream. A bottle of pop was 6 bucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on, man. I know it's not going to be $2. I get that, but it was intense. Speaking of pizza, I went back to Geraci's on Friday because my buddy was in town, and I wanted to take him there because he lives oh, in this good for you. place that, where they don't have a lot of good pizza in New York City. Connecticut. And I was like, dude, you got to try real pizza. You, you got to get away from that New York crap. It's just garbage. Oh, you like so, New York? We've got New York-style mm, pizza. How do you like that? Take that. And I ran into the owners, and they were very appreciative. Tito Francona? Uh, not Tito, but Jason and Bucky uh, were very appreciative of uh, all the love we've been giving them. Yeah, I saw there, somebody so. tagged me in something, but I, I guess well, they it, like posted it, one it, of our segments. It expired or something. Oh, yeah, okay. they posted I, I didn't one of our it. segments where we were talking mm-hmm. about it, and they put it on their story and stuff like that. So uh, they were they just said thank you to each and every one of us. Got to get in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's good. The eat P. Chug whiskey, hail Satan! Is I declare war. Alan, you should know that. You should know that. That's a death metal band. What is he saying? It's a, from shirt. a death metal band called. That's one of the I T-shirts you war. saw. Yeah, that I said that one of the. I saw a lot of T-shirts with a. Eat pro- poontang, drink whiskey, hail Satan. Chug whiskey, hail Chug. Satan. Oh, that's what he's. The he's, eat p. Oh, eat p. Oh, he's censoring yeah. himself. Okay. The yeah. eat p. Chug whiskey, hail Satan! Is I declare war, Alan? You should. Oh, know- I see. What do I have to memorize every band's T-shirts? Yes. yes. How the hell would I know that? I love how the bands sell show. T-shirts with that stuff on it, which I think is kind of silly. And then like the bands wearing a Rush T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we're not gonna wear our own T-shirts. Those are ridiculous. Well, who? It's a dare. Who would walk around in a dumb shirt like that? That's the other thing is that we Brian wanted uh, Queens of Stone Age merch, and so we waited in this giant merch line, and it's like four tenths long because they had every band's merch. Mm. Queens of Stone Age had one shirt and one hoodie, and that's it. And it the makes hoodie, a, it makes a decision <laughs> making so easy. <laughs> well, the hoodie was literally just a black hoodie, and then in red small font in the very middle it said Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, seventy five dollars. Yeah. And he's like, I can't, I can't justify this. Like, I that that's not a cool enough hoodie. It's so plain. And he was real. Bu- I was, I was shocked that that's all they had because some bands had like five or six shirts, two hoodies, uh, bandanas, koozies. It's too much. You know? It's too much. But just least- give them a hoodie and a t-shirt. Yeah. You're doing people a favor. I guess you're not doing people a favor with the pricing, but I mean, yeah. it's all festival pricing. But the people were like. We got bandanas and beer koozies yeah. because bands make their money on merch. That's like what I, I get, said. I get it. Especially, nobody's making money on a festival, but you're selling merch and, you, you know, I, I fully understand. 
especially for this being, they said it's their first set in five years. I would have thought they would have had a lot more merch. If they're, like, starting to get back out, you know you want to get a little nice little egg nest of little monies since you haven't been on in a while. A little egg, egg nest. nest? A little egg nest. <laughs> <laughs> It's um <laughs> whatever. No, listen, it's about the music, people. Lex it's not about the merch. It's a hell of a thing. Yeah. Uh, we were actually trying to calculate how much money something like that makes. But we like couldn't even fathom it. We were like it's got to cost tens of millions of dollars, right? Just between paying the bands. How much do you think it costs to pay Foo Fighters to do Well, since like they're that? basically only paying the headliners, um, you what know. What do you mean they're only paying? They don't pay the no, everybody gets something, but I think they I think they have like um their deals are different. Like Foo Fighters are a band you have to pay to play. That's what I mean. You, you want Foo Fighters, you're gonna give them eighty thousand dollars or whatever. You to, think you know. that's it? Because me and Brian no, it's are more, like, it's, it's more gotta than be that. like five million dollars. No, 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 no. I guarantee Foo Fighters. They're doing Less every than a million? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Because if you're gonna do every festival over the summer first of all, those guys don't need the money. Second of all, if you're gonna do every festival over the summer. You're not going to be charging every festival a million dollars. I mean, festivals have pretty good budgets, but the reason there's four million bands is because most of them don't make any money. They go, okay, well, you can sell all the merch you want. You get a cut of maybe X, Y, and Z. But it's just a good, especially for baby bands, it's a great place to be seen. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you're a Tool or a Foo Fighters or or a Queens of the Stone Age, um, the Venge Sevenfold probably did it for sandwiches. They were the headliners. Yeah. They went on they after. Stink. They were the uh, Friday night headliners. Yeah, they, I know. They still stink. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They still stink. But yeah, we were trying to we were trying to gauge it because I'm like I have no idea how many people come to this over the course of a weekend. But you gotta think, man. Between food prices, ticket, like admission, all the alcohol. Each yeah. person, I said, on a low end per person, you're spending three hundred bucks. On a low end. That's if you're not getting merch. I'm saying just price of admission, parking, and um, food and like food and drink. Well, low so, end, three hundred dollars. I think I think sold out attendance is 120 thousand people at Sonic Temple. Damn. Over four days, Thursday, Friday, or three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No, four days. Four days now. Yeah. So you're talking, let's say on the low end, three hundred thousand people. Well, especially since it was gone for three years. Yeah. I mean, the last one they did was 2019. I think mm-hmm. the I think they flipped the Sonic Temple, and then COVID hit. Yep. Three hundred thousand people. We'll even be more conservative than that. Well, if each person it, is not, spending two hundred fifty. That's seventy five million dollars. But it's not three hundred because a lot of people do all four days. Yes, but if you're buying that pass, it's uh, five hundred dollars, and okay. I'm only accounting for two hundred fifty dollars a person. No. At two hundred fifty dollars a person, three hundred thousand people is seventy five million dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of money. That's why I'm saying that I thought that the bands would be charging Foo Fighters to be like, all right, it's five mil to but have I, us. Here. I still don't think. I don't. That's it's not, not but it's not the food, but it's not three hundred thousand people every over the course of four days. You don't think that over the course of four days that three hundred thousand people attended that? No, because a lot of people stay for the whole weekend. I don't know. They're not getting that many people. But then maybe you gotta, a, maybe one hundred and fifty thousand. Also, if you people wanna, are only doing one day. Some people are like I only want to see Tool. If you want to book, right. the, if you want the Foo Fighters to play a corporate event, it's between one point five and one point nine million dollars. See, that's what I was. I was like, it's got to be a couple million. Yeah, not to play Rock or Sonic Temple. I bet they're not charging. Why would it be them less? That. No, I'm get, I bet they're getting. I would think it'd Foo be Fighters more. Too, yeah, hmm. especially at those prices. Of everything. If they okay, so you're paying us a flat rate. You pay us two million dollars, and then they're charging two hundred and fifty for a Friday pass. So per f- person, it you know? says uh, Foo Fighters average gross, an average gross north of a million dollars per stop. But that's their average gross. That's and that's the like the headlining things. That's what I'm saying. Festivals are a weird, different kind of calculus and math because there's so many bands. You can count on one hand the headliners, obviously, but like. They're Kiss played, right? I don't know what Kiss normally gets. I'm sure they're not getting full freight to do a festival because a they're not playing as long. But they're also not getting fifty grand. No, I'm not saying fifty grand, but I'm just saying they're not going to get their like their regular fee because they go, hey, fly in, play for forty minutes, fly out, and at this point with that that level of band, those headliners, you go, yeah, you make some decent money, and maybe they aren't paying them a mill a piece. Who knows? 
But it's not like a regular headlining gig where you're selling the tickets. You're getting a cut of the ticket. You know what I mean? But they are like, selling the tickets. Like, a lot of people probably bought a Friday or a Saturday day pass or Sunday, whatever it is, so that they could go see Foo Fighters. Right, and but you're also seeing 50 other bands. Yeah. Your ticket is getting you into hundreds of bands. I'm just saying the math is different than, like, if you're buying a ticket to see Foo Fighters play for two hours at the Bryce Jordan Center or whatever. That's a different thing than... Um, I think that's why they play all the festivals. Fly in, do 45 minutes, fly out. You know, you do get a nice check, but it's just a different thing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. How much you got on you? If we want Foo Fighters to come in here and play the Duncan Lounge. <laughs> 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 the squeeze them into the Duncan Lounge. <laughs> yeah. I have, uh, I got like probably 100 bucks maybe on me. Maybe all right, well, that's a start. That's a start. Well, next time I talk to Gary Spivak, the guy that's behind Sonic Temple, I'm a guy, hey, how much do you guys pay Foo Fighters? What do you think, man? I mean, you can make a hell of a lot more money if you're playing First Energy Stadium than if you're playing a festival. Which is why I think it would they would charge more. They're like, make it worth my time to come here. Because uh, now No, because they know what, because I think they know they're specifically doing all these festivals. But they're also, you're you're taking a market away from us. I could come play Ohio State Stadium, whatever that's called in Columbus, and take all the money. Crew Stadium, yeah. So instead of me doing that, now in Columbus, my market is this festival. So now you have to pay me $5 million. Hmm. That's the way my mind thought of it. Because now they can't go back there for a year. I mean, yeah, they maybe. could, but people already saw them, you know? Right, but if Foo Fighters came back next week to do, like... They'd be fine. They'd be fine, <laughs> yeah. It's going to affect it either way. But again... You can't play the same market every six months. Well, but there are also a couple of bands that are breathing that rarefied air, too. Like, Foo Fighters are, like, the last of your can't-miss stadium rock bands, too. Yeah. But there's also contractual things where they're probably not allowed to play... 90 miles for, or something yeah. like that, yeah. And not oh, everybody wow. buys the weekend pass. Like, when, when I give away Sonic Temple Pass or Festival or Incarceration, it's the weekend pass. But I wonder how many of those people are there all weekend. Well, we had weekend passes, and we went one you night. Went one night, right. You know? So if people, I think they look at the thing, and they go, okay, let's go Friday and see some bands on Saturday. I don't know if people are there all weekend. There's a lot of people who camp. Well, yes, that was the other thing. First time you go to a festival, you go, we're going to camp. And then you look Miserable. around and you're like, oh, my God, we're <laughs> it's not going to hot. Yeah. Everybody stinks. Yes. It was like. I'm not 22 anymore. So we went Friday and we saw all, there was so much sunburn on Friday, which means that a ton of people were also there Thursday. Yes. Unless they were doing mm-hmm. something else in the sun right. <laughs> the day before. You they know? passed out. Yeah. Well, there you go. It was a great time. Good. Trent Reznor, by the way, I was reading, is doing the score for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Oh. And his uh, collaborator, Atticus Finch. Sorry, Atticus, Atticus Finch. <laughs> from To Kill a Mockingbird. Atticus, what? Atticus Ross, of course. Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross will score Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, colon, Mutant Mayhem. So he's written That's the score the with that. Seth Rogen? Don't know. I think Seth Rogen's no, producing. I, I, I'm, he didn't even know the there was a new one. Yeah, it, it's a, just animated, I believe. Okay. but Not live action. No, it looks like the animation style is similar to the Into the Spider-Verse style. Oh, okay. Style. Yeah, there it is. Produced by Seth Rogen, features an all-star voice cast. Paul Rudd, John Cena, uh, Natasha Dimitriou, if you know uh, what we do in the shadows. She's Nadia. Oh, I love her. And Post Malone. One of your uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Look at that. Well, congratulations. We have Bureau Chiefs in Kansas City, Missouri, the Show Me State. About an hour north of that is a tiny little town called Gower, Missouri. And there are thousands of onlookers hoping to smooch. This is the stupidest thing. It's so so dumb. A dead nun. Who How they exhumed nuns? her body and noticed that her body had not deco- uh, decomposed at all. Why did they and exhume people, her body? People love this kind of stuff. Jesus people love this kind of stuff because people are desperate 
for symbols of something that that I guess underscores what they believe or thousands of Catholics many, many years ago, I'll recall uh, in Chicago, um, there was a water stain on the underside of an overpass. I remember us talking about this. There was a water stain and it dripped in the form of the Virgin Mary or something. And so all these people would, and all I'm thinking is, man, I hope a bunch of people get hit. <laughs> because they're, you know, it's a major expressway there, and they're putting flowers down and whatever. So this nun died in 2019, and um, she'd been dead for a while, obviously. Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster. Hey. Oh, my goodness. No wonder we haven't heard from her in a while. Uh, was 95 when she passed, and her body was recently exhumed. It was going to be moved inside a chapel. Ah. Uh. There was a convent there in Gower, Missouri, that she had founded, and they were going to move her body into this chapel, and they opened her coffin. Sounds like maybe it was a potter's... I don't know. It's 2019. I don't yeah. know why she was in a wooden coffin, but they said that her remains were intact, even though her body had not been embalmed. And so, obviously, that's pretty wild. But people love this kind of stuff. They just are desperate for anything that means something, and you can't really blame them. Right. Nothing means anything. So something like this, you know, if you can attach some meaning to it. It's fate. Visitors are being given a limit, uh, given limited opportunities to touch and even kiss touch. the deceased Ugh. nun's body. Would you kiss the would you kiss the nun pound cake? Not for a million dollars. Kiss the it's nun. good luck. No, it's nasty. You would for a kiss million dollars. Here's a million dollars. Kiss this desiccated bride of Christ. You'd go, you're a man of God. You're a Christian. Yeah. It should be right up your alley. No false prophets. And a million. What false prophets? It's an idol. It's totally, as a Christian, you shouldn't be doing this. Well, no, they're walking up and smooching a dead nun. They're not yeah. worshiping the dead nun. They're but, looking at him going, oh, my God. They're, but they're, it's not idolatry. It's, it's kind of idolatry. No, they're not worshiping the nun. Listen, it's all silly, mm -hmm. but they're not, they're not putting it up and hoisting it and, and, and worshiping it. No, I feel like if there's some bad juju attacks to that or something. Hmm. Like it, it like you kiss it. The bad it, the bad juju outweighs the million dollars. It's gonna be like the that. money you can see versus the bad juju that you can't and is in your head. I feel like it's gonna be like drag me to hell. Do you remember that movie? No. I oh. do, but how so? Because it was like that nun that went crazy and she was biting people's necks and stuff. And then. Well, it was a gypsy lady or something or an old. Whatever it was. Yeah. But it's going to be like that. I don't know why that lady. I think you're conflating horror movies. With, there's a movie called The Nun. Yeah, there is a movie. And the Nun from those uh, Insidious movies or yeah. something like that. Uh, but but regardless, I feel like if her body. The Conjuring. Is like, if her body is like that, it may, it might be something supernatural. Therefore, it's out of our control. I don't like things that. We can't control. It's not supernatural. That's why you take the million dollars. What good is a million dollars if uh, some supernatural if entity? Because <laughs> yeah. you got a million dollars. Just take Because you chance. can buy a bunch of ghost detectors. Yeah. That's no. why. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Pound Cake is a man, if nothing else. Plus, I'd probably get sick. Uh, from kissing the desiccated I mean, I I, it was hot as hell yesterday, and I went out to the lake, and it, like, I got sick. I don't know how I got a cold or if it was, like, seasonal allergies, but, like, my nose hasn't stopped Did running. you go into the lake? Yeah, we were on a kayak. Yeah, don't go in that lake. But he's saying, did you go, like, it, it, submerge? It wasn't Lake Erie, no. Okay. It well, was uh, lake. Hinkley Lake, or whatever it is. Oh. But you were kayaking. That's nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's fun. Hinkley. Oh, good for you. Boyfriend pound cake's always a different person. I'm not. I, I complain the whole time. I don't think I'm a good But partner. you did it. Yeah, but, like, I, I was like, we really have to do this? Because he's been talking about it for weeks. I know we have to go to break. So we we could get into it next break. But, uh, he's been complaining about it, mentioning it for weeks. And he's like, well, I just brought a picnic ba picnic basket. We might as well do it. I'm like, great. We'll go on Memorial Day. That's right. Stick fantastic. around, listeners. When we get back, Pound Cake <laughs> complains about a picnic with his boyfriend. That's uh, riveting. Yeah. Next on the <laughs> Alan Cox Show, don't go anywhere. Oh, boy. Turn out a million dollars for kissing a dead nun. <laughs> then he went kayaking. Well, I want to hear about it, quite frankly. I don't I care if anybody else does. I want to hear about him complaining in a picnic kayak. And hiking. And hiking. Oh, double whammy. 
All right, I got a break. 35192, you want to text and we'll be back. It's the Ellen Clark Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart device you have. Just tell me to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Buzzard Radio. The Buzzard. He's Rover. Oh, it's 